Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to Beepaw Picks and the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. And I haven't did this in a while. I'm going to go do something that I do every once in, I do every once in a while, mostly because it can help me with my picks. I'm going to give you all the NHL picks for today. That is a, uh, what, Tuesday, April 26th. I'm going to go over them on the fly. Like, I've kind of looked over at it. I want to kind of hash it out. So I figure if I did a video, and uh, maybe I'll get some new things in my mind to tell me what picks are. If we are up 550 units this year, and if you're into making those, that sort of units, money, then you can. I'll give you a free trial. You comment in the comment section. And come over to bpalpicks.com. But I want to take a look at the picks for today. It's the end of the season. So things change a little bit. I'm going to talk it through as I do it. So let's look at it. Okay. So we got Detroit and Toronto. Now, here is a uh, matchup. This is uh, on Odd Shark. You would think Toronto would be the easy, easy, easy pick here. Obviously, they're juiced up. You're paying, uh, well, let me get this to change the odd settings to American for everybody because they don't usually go on decimal odds. Uh, minus 450, you got to dole out for a hundred bucks that is really really bad and um toronto what's the motivation for this game for them that's the thing they really have everything wrapped up as far as their positioning and all of that i think toronto could very well be playing a game here that is like just let's not get injured i'm actually kind of surprised they're putting campbell in here and with that in mind, maybe they will play hard, but I think your best bet here is Detroit plus two and a half to keep it at least close. Um, like I said, I don't think Toronto's going to be fighting for the puck in front of the net. They're not going to be set crashing the net, all of those sort of things like that. You're going to have Matt, they're trying, going to try to find Matthews in the good spots to score goals. Now, that being said, they could be, uh, you know, those could go in. And I think they're going to have possessed most of the play. But Detroit, they hopefully have some pride. I, they, the last game against New Jersey, New Jersey just mailed it in. Like, the New Jersey played terrible. They only had eight shots in the first two periods. And Detroit played fairly hard. So I think that they're probably going to be playing fairly hard here. I'll probably go plus two and a half. As far as the over-under is concerned, as far as the total is concerned, I think seven is unlikely. Um, I think Toronto's going to be practicing defense as much as possible against Detroit here. They're going to try to be getting in playoff mode, um, and puck management, all of that, getting their mindset ready for the playoffs. It's possible. I probably wouldn't play the total, um, but if I had to, I would probably say I would probably go with the under. Um, so we'll go Detroit plus two and a half and under seven, tentatively under seven. Uh, Buffalo versus Boston. Here's a situation, or sorry, Buffalo versus Boston. Florida versus Boston. Here's the situation again. Florida doesn't have anything to play for here. They pretty much have wrapped up the President's Trophy, I believe. Uh, let me take a look at that. Standings. Uh, have they wrapped up? Because it is going to be important for them to wrap up the President's Trophy. And... Because this franchise just needs as much good as they can possibly get. You know what I'm saying? They haven't did much their whole uh, existence. And winning the President's Trophy that, to them should be extremely important, I would think. Um, Colorado won. See, see, there's a couple games left. I mean, they haven't wrapped it up, but it's pretty darn close. 
for that being said, because they haven't wrapped it up, I think Florida's going to actually play pretty good this game. Um, they, uh, I, I don't know if they're going to be worrying about injuries so much. They have a lot of depth. They can absorb some injuries if they happen to happen. Uh, Boston, on the other hand, see, I'm doing this on the fly. So Boston, on the other hand, uh, if they win this game, they get two points behind Tampa. They might want to, do they want to play Toronto instead of, uh, what would it be, Carolina? I think they'd be happy with Carolina. They're at home. I'm going to say Florida. I'm going to go Florida here. I, I just have a feeling that Florida is going to want to get make sure that they get that President's Trophy uh, to be able to put that on the mantle. It's great for the fans. Um, if Even if they don't win the Cup, then, then uh, they at least have that. And it's something to add positive to that franchise. Now, that being said, over under now. Um, I'm going to go over here because I, with that in mind, if Florida is putting her out there, there's there's probably going to be goals. I mean, Florida just always seems to score if they're trying, if they're really trying to. If they're putting their full effort out there, Florida's got the lineup that's going to put the puck behind the puck in the net. Uh, Boston isn't as good defensively as they've always been thought of to be. Uh, like even when they played Montreal, they won, but it was 5-3. Now the Rangers, they uh, played well defensively there. But if you watch that game, it was really goaltending that kept them in there. Pittsburgh scored four against them. And uh, then St. Louis and Pittsburgh, they, they shaded to the under in those games. Now Florida just lost to Tampa Bay 8-4. And that's the other thing. After a loss like that, even if you weren't really worrying about whether you're going to win so much, you do want to save some face. Um, and they still scored four goals on against Vasilevsky in that game. Um, for the most part, I look at six goals, six goals against Winnipeg. I'm going to lean to the over at six and a half. You don't get overs right now very much with Florida at six and a half. So I would say that would be my pick there. Uh Next game, Car New York Rangers versus Carolina. Carolina owns the Rangers in, in New York. And uh, the problem is they're going to be playing their backup goaltender, like third string goaltender here, who's a kid and um, really was the reason why they lost their last game against... Oh, I'm sorry. They won their last game. They won their last. They won their last game five two with him in there. Ah, I want to take the Rangers here, but Carolina has owned them. In and Carolina doesn't have a lot to play for. The Rangers are still young. I'm. I I think it's more of a gut. I'm just going to go with the Rangers here, um, maybe to finally put it away against Carolina. Um, so it's just a gut. Minus 120, I'll take the Rangers. Ottawa, New Jersey, I'm taking Ottawa here just straight up. Um, as far as over-under is concerned, New Jersey, I, I don't know, maybe New Jersey will change up their, like be embarrassed and come into this game and try hard against Ottawa because against Detroit, they didn't at all. And I have a feeling that that's just going to keep on going here. I think those kids really are starting to wear down in New Jersey. And Ottawa is playing what Ottawa always does. Like, I don't think they know what it means to worry about whether you're going to get injured or not. Or they don't even care. Um, they want to they want to ha set themselves up so people know when you go into Ottawa or when you play Ottawa, you're going to be playing, you're going to be getting having a tough game. They, they want to make an identity for themselves, which New Jersey should want to do too, but they're not. So I'm going to take the team that seems to really believe in their identity, and I'm going to go with Ottawa here. Um, 
I'm actually going to, and Blackwood is in net for New Jersey too, by the way, who hasn't played in forever, uh, with Forsberg in for Ottawa. I, I think Ottawa will win, and probably you could even go puck line on this. Like, I'm that confident about Ottawa here. The money line is, what, minus 145. If you go on the spread, uh, oh, whoops, that's total spread. Minus one and a half, you're getting, what, plus 175? That's not bad. You throw a little bit on that. Because uh, what I saw, what I've seen from New Jersey as of late, I don't think they're beating anybody. Uh, Pittsburgh versus Edmonton. Now, this is a tough game because they did, Pitt, Edmonton didn't have a bad game against Columbus their last game, but they had Corpus Allo in that, and uh, he's just never seems to come through. Um, I think Edmonton really has more to play for here. Pittsburgh has not been playing that well either. Uh, plus, they have DeSmith in that. I do believe Pittsburgh won their last game. Yeah, 4-1 to one over. Oh, no, they lost 4-1 to one to Philadelphia. That's right. And they look terrible. So you have two teams coming off of bad losses. The question here is, does Pittsburgh want to fight now that they're in a playoff spot compared to Edmonton, who pretty much has solidified home ice as well. Um, I would honestly just avoid this game. I, I certainly don't want to take the money line on Pittsburgh at minus 150. Maybe Oilers plus one and a half. Because Smith is in net, they should keep him in, even if it's uh, Oilers plus one and a half, which doesn't really pay all that well or if you're going to play anything you might as well take the plus money and go with Edmonton that they're going to bounce back against Columbus with Smith in that rather than Pittsburgh with the Smith in that so let's go Pittsburgh money line um, I think it's going to be under I, I think I think this will be uh, like I said I don't think either one of these teams are going to like both of these teams are going to be fairly careful uh, that they're not going to be driving the net and doing all those things that can get you injured. So a lot of perimeter shots, even a goaltender like DeSmith should be able to stop a lot of them, and Smith will too. I think the best play there is probably the under, because you're getting, what, are you getting six and a half? Yeah, six and a half. So we're going to go on the under there at plus 110. Not a bad play. Uh, Tampa Bay versus Columbus. I mean, Tampa Bay should win this all day, but we just saw what happened to Edmonton. Um, and Tampa Bay is a team that the regular season, it's hard for them to get up for. Now, that being said, and you're getting like minus 370 on Tampa Bay against a Columbus team that has been trash for the most part, except for that game against Edmonton. Um, and a Pittsburgh team that just lost to a much worse team in Philadelphia. Are they going to now have pride and want to go up against Columbus? Or sorry, that sorry, Tampa Bay did not lose to Philadelphia. That was Pittsburgh, a Tampa Bay team that just lost to Philadelphia. Uh, before that, before their win against Edmonton, they were not good at all. Um, Columbus has been terrible on the road. Um, Tampa Bay did, you know, put it up against a eight-one Nashville six-two. It's possible that they're getting themselves playoff ready. And they trounce Columbus here. I, I'm going to go with that. I think Columbus minus one and a half, uh, or sorry, Tampa Bay minus one and a half is the play that you have to do here. But having concern that they're not going to want give their best. In fact, it's possible, and we'll look at left wing lock here. Oh, no, Vasilevsky will be in. Yeah, I got, I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. Minus one and a half. Merzlikens has been playing well as of late. But going by what Tampa Bay has been doing the last little while, it does seem like they want to get themselves their playoff legs going. So if they do, and that's what they do, what they want to do, then they should beat Columbus there for sure. Uh, as far as the total is concerned, look at their – I mean, let's go over. What the heck? Let's just go over. They've been trouncing everybody. Uh, over six and a half. Islanders versus Washington. This is tough. Sorokin is in net. He got just lit up against Buffalo the last time he played. Um, uh, the Islanders look like they kind of died. Uh, honestly, that's 
it just seems like it's over um, for them. You would think the Islanders would want to play with some heart against Washington here. Uh, they just have some really old players that are starting to wear down, and they do that every year, even when they were making the playoffs. Um, now, on the other hand, you got Samsonov in for Washington, which is not somebody I like. Somebody I like to put money on too much, and you're, you know, going up minus one ninety. Washington has solidified their spot. They don't really have much to play for in this game, and Ovechkin's not going to be in the lineup. Really, um, maybe just take the. What are you getting on the spread for Islanders? Minus 165. I mean, you might as well take that spread. Instead of taking Washington in regulation, because they 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 might not want to be risking any more injury, especially with Ovechkin being out, uh, this could be a really boring game. I would say Islanders have been playing to the over, but I don't know if Washington's really going to be trying all that hard. So I would kind of lean the under here and take Islanders plus one and a half. Uh, Arizona versus Minnesota. Minnesota does have something to play for. They can get home ice advantage if they take out St. Louis. So, and Arizona is just trash. If Minnesota's trying here, they they absolutely trounce this game. I'm going to take Minnesota minus one minus one and a half. Uh, that's paying that that you're. But I got it at a much better price than what it is right now. That's why you go over to bpalpicks.com. You would have got this last night at uh, a much better price. In fact, way better. It was, uh, I think I'm getting uh, minus 170 or 180, something like that. I don't mind that. I might even go minus two and a half uh, all, as well in here because if Minnesota's trying to win this game, they're probably going to get up early. The thing we what would have to watch out for is what happened in St. Louis where they kind of let their guard down, and uh, uh, Arizona came back. I don't see that happening here in Minnesota, um, but it's something to think about if they get up early, which I think they will. You could probably look at Minnesota minus 0.5 first period. Also, Minnesota is just a beast at home. Their record at home is unbelievable. Um, now, if for some reason they're disinterested or whatever Arizona could do could do this they could still win if they're disinterested Washington was completely taxed against uh, Arizona the last time they played and still won two nothing so there's nothing look at all the people out for Arizona too there's really nothing in their lineup Chickren is out Mayo Keller I mean everybody is out for minute for Arizona and they don't really have much of a roster to begin with uh, Again, here's Spurgeon and Zuccarello are questionable for the game, but I don't think it matters. If their legs are flying, I think they're going to win that game. Simple as that. And win can by a considerable amount. Uh, Calgary, Nashville, this is tough. Nashville looks like they're spent at the end so uh, this year. And I kind of said that going in, that um, it was pretty likely that Nashville couldn't keep on playing the way they were playing. They were fighting every game. It was a scrap every game all year. And I had a feeling that they were going to fade down the stretch. And sure enough, they have. Um, I would like to play take them at plus 120 here because they do have a lot to play for where, look at the computer says, four, four and a half to, you know, Calgary by a landslide here. The thing is, Calgary really doesn't have much to play for here. Um, they do own Nashville on the road. My leaning, though, they didn't have much to play for against Vancouver, uh, not much against Dallas, but they still won the game. Now, the last time they played, Nashville did win 3-2. And Calgary is, is uh, um, resting Markstrom tonight. So you're going to have... Uh, the backup goaltender, who has been very good in Vladar um, against Predators and UC Saros, who has not been very good. It's a tough game. Um, my thing, I think, I, I think Calgary will probably want to put this away. I just think Sutter is not the type of coach 
that's going to have players have a mindset where we don't want to get injured. He's just not. He, he's always he's an identity coach, and every game to him is sending a message to the next time you play that team. And since they lost the last game, I think they'll be all in it here. Um, I believe the total here now is six and a half. And again, if uh, well, let's look at the total. Is it a six? Are we got no? It's a six. I'll probably go with the over here. If Calgary's given her, and Nashville is doing the best they can, I think that's probably the better play. Total over six uh, on, on this game. Vegas versus Dallas. Um, I got over five and a half here. I don't know who's going to win this game, honestly. I would lean Dallas. I just have no faith in Vegas. I actually took San Jose over Vegas the last game, and San Jose came back and won, mostly because Thompson isn't very good, and this team is just not cohesive at all. Dallas needs it. They are going to do what they normally do and probably keep it close. Uh, and just barely win the game. It's a game you're probably going to have to sweat if you decide to take the line on here. Um, but I do think that because Thompson is in and Vegas is going to be trying every bit they can in this game, that goals will be scored here. I think over five and a half. And I would think that both of them are going to come out hard right from the beginning. They want to get up right away. And uh, over one and a half first period, it probably pays really well. I'll probably throw a, a bit on that. St. Louis, Colorado. St. Louis said they were tired when they played Arizona, and Arizona came back. At least the coach did. Now, when a coach says that, quite often they're sending to a message to their t their players that you played tired. Like we're not here to to. It's not time to rest. Barubi is one of those guys as well that I don't think worries about whether you're going to get injured or not. It's all about sending messages. And this is these two teams could be playing each other in the playoffs. So now Colorado, on the other hand, doesn't seem to be that type of team. They've been mailing it in almost every single game right now. The question is, are they going to find value in giving it up here uh, against uh a St. Louis team again that they may have to play again. I think it's quite possible that they do find value in that. But I also think it's quite possible that they basically, because if you've been watching Colorado games as of late, they're not driving the net. They're trying to score from the perimeter all game long. And if they're going to do that against St. Louis, St. Louis is going to win this game and win this game clearly, I think. Now, I don't believe that goaltending has been uh, they have picked their, uh, the, has been confirmed yet. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, neither one of them. Um, I mean, if it's Bennington, you can't back St. Louis. But if it's Huso, I think I'm just going to take a little bit on St. Louis here. Why not? Uh, the Avalanche haven't won in four games. I mean, the last game, if they had pride and they didn't want to lose four in a row, they would have played a lot better than they did against the Jets. They played terrible against the Jets. So does it, what makes them think that they're going to play better against the Blues? The problem we have with this is the Blues have played a crap ton of hockey as of late. And a crap ton of hockey on the road. See, uh, San Jose, Arizona, Anaheim. Uh, this is uh, daily face-off. And... Now they play on the road against Colorado. Man, it's a tough game. I'd probably fade this. And then they're going home after this and eventually playing Vegas. So they could even be looking ahead at being home. If Colorado decides to, they're going to win this game. They All they have to do is try. If they try considerably, they probably take this game. St. Louis won't have the legs. Um So I'm going to say first period over. I think St. Louis is going to give everything they got in the first period and then lose their legs after. So I think they could get up early and then Colorado comes back and wins it later. But first period over or St. Louis uh, plus 0.5. The other problem we have with this is look at the juice you're giving up. 
for Colorado in this spot. I mean, minus 170, really, against a St. Louis team that's playing like they are in the Colorado's last four in a row. That's tough. That's tough. Um, I stick with the first period here. First period, St. Louis plus 0.5 or something like that. And you're probably getting not a bad return on that. Uh, Vancouver versus Seattle. I'm going to say, I'm going to go that Vancouver wants to end this season on a positive note. They haven't looked like, it, they, it could be a terrible letdown spot for them too. Because they're completely out of it now. Um, but Seattle on the road is not very good. I, I think Vancouver is going to play hard for their fans. More, more than likely, I think Boudreaux is like, look, we owe our fans a good game here. Let's give it. If we don't make it, we don't make it. Um, we can rest after. But this is, at the very least, let's give our fans a win here against the Seattle team. So, you know, for the organization, I, I think Vancouver is going to win this game. I would take Vancouver in regulation. And because of that, I would kind of lean to the over here as well. Um, Seattle has been potting a couple lately, if you look at it. Like, they, they have been potting goals. Um, they play, they, they've been, mostly because they've been playing fairly loose. So, how come they don't have their last games here? Huh. They have the last 10 games. Oh, last 10 games. Yeah, Seattle. Here we go. Um. They lost against Dallas. They did pot two. They pot three against Minnesota. They beat Colorado. Ottawa, they potted four. See, they, they've been potting a couple. And if Vancouver really wants to play this up and they want to win for their fans, I could see that going over the total or at least a push. Anyways. Next. Anaheim versus San Jose, and I'm taking San Jose here, right straight up. Uh, my, it's minus 135. I would even consider in regulation. San Jose has been playing like they. Um, Bugner has a philosophy, much like Barube does, where you're wanting to send a message. They want to be champions, and they want to have a champion's mindset every time they play. Now, it hasn't been successful, but. They do play teams tough. Look, at they came back against Vegas when they were down 3-1, they didn't give up in that spot. They kept coming back. They had really nothing to play for. I think the same thing's going to happen here. Now, I do believe that Anaheim does kind of own San Jose here, if I remember correctly. 5-1 uh, and one in their last six games against San Jose. That's the only thing that holds me back here. The problem is Anaheim has been playing like garbage against every single team pretty much so far in the like the last 10 or 15 games uh, against against St. Louis. I, it looked like they were just out for a skate um, and it doesn't seem like the coach Anaheim's coach uh, Dallas Eakins can get these guys to move and play hard at any time at all right now. So they're a really young team. Most of them are really banged up. San Jose is a more veteran team. I, I actually really like this play. It's going to be one of my better plays today. I think San Jose wins that game in regulation. Well, there you go, boys and girls. That's my all my picks for today. I hope you enjoyed them. Uh, come back and uh, I'll do this again. I'm going to be doing some playoff stuff. And I'll be doing live stream. Don't forget it. Sub up. The NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. You can be part of that too. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.